Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTED Chemistry channel. So in this uh, lecture tutorial video, this is the beginning of these uh, 14 to 16 years old chemistry curriculum uh, suitable for the O-level or the IGCSE or any GCSE 14 to 16 years old uh, curriculum all around the world as I mentioned. Okay, so in this topic on states of matter, it kicks off uh, talking about the three different states of matter, solid, liquids and gases. These are just the learning objective uh, as stated uh, by Cambridge. Uh, but also very very common to any sort of uh, curriculum uh, standards as required all around the world. So it says the candidate should be able to state the distinguishing properties. So distinguishing means uh, you need to tell apart the difference, okay? Uh, how different are they between the solid, the liquid, and the gases? And we are talking about um, the mole at molecular level. How are they different and not just how they look from the outside, but in terms of their chemistry, we need to look at what happened at the uh, molecular level or at the particle level. Okay, and the next thing is to describe the structures, the structure of solid, liquids, and gases in terms of, so these are the important things, how far are they separated? Very, very important for you to be specific on how far are the particles separated, how are the particles arranged, as well as how do they move. Motion is to do with movement, so how much can they move, how are they arranged, as well as how far apart are they. So the first thing we'll be talking about is on kinetic particle theory. So whenever you heard uh, or you read in the questions, explain in terms of kinetic particle theory, what does it mean? In, in, a, uh, in a nutshell, what it means is you must discuss and you must talk about what happens uh, to the particles, what happened to the particles, what happened at the particulate levels. So meaning to say not from the outside, but at the particulate level, what happened to them. When a question asks you, explain, describe, using kinetic particle theory, you must talk about the particles. If you talk about anything else apart from the particles, you wouldn't get anything at all because the kinetic particle theory is to do with what happens to the particles. In terms of the three states of matter, so this is how we represent uh, the model of a solid particles, the model of a liquid particles, and the model of a gaseous particle. So how in the world do we tell apart their differences? Here, if you look at their packing, this is talking about tightly packed. This word is really, really important because this is how you represent tightly packed. They are kind of like touching each other on every, uh, uh, in every direction. Whereas here in liquid, they are closely packed, but they are not tightly packed. Okay, so sometimes question will try and trick you. This is also closely packed, but the difference between this and this is that this is tight, whereas this has got a bit of space in between. So you cannot use tightly packed for liquid, simply closely packed. Okay, uh, but what is very important is uh, arrangement. The arrangement is orderly, whereas there's no regular arrangement for liquid and no regular arrangement for gases because the, the gaseous particles are spaced very far apart from each other. The liquid particle has got a little bit of space in between, but the solid particles are tightly packed, no space in between at all, and they are arranged in an orderly manner. In terms of movement, so solid particles, we talk about vibrations, we talk about vibrate, about fixed positions. Very important when you see solid particles. Yes, they cannot move freely because they are tightly packed to each other, because there are no, not much space in between, but they still can move. They can move, but they only vibrate. They can't move freely, but they can move. Okay, they vibrate about fixed positions. Liquid obviously can flow, and uh, just like water, water can flow, water is a liquid. But then, uh, how, how do they move in terms of kinetic particle theory? I need to talk about the particles. They can slide past each other uh, due to the spaces in between, they can do that. Gaseous particles, they move freely at high speed. This is very important. They move freely, they also move randomly in all directions at very high speed, okay? So they haven't mentioned anything about speed yet, but if I just mention speed, is to do with kinetic energy. You would have learned this in your uh, physics component or your lower secondary science. Speed is to do with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is to do with speed. 
If you travel faster, you have greater kinetic energy. If you are slow in moving, you have lesser kinetic energy. In terms of the movement of solid, liquid and gases, so we can only uh, uh, summarize that solid particles move really, really slow because they only vibrate about fixed positions. So solid, liquid and gases, uh, in terms of that, they travel at greater speed going from left to right, solid to liquid to gas. If they travel at greater speed, their kinetic energy also increases going from solid to liquid to gases. All right. Um, in terms of volume, so these are not specified in the syllabus, but we know that solids cannot be compressed easily. So if you have a solid in front of you, if you try to you know, uh, squeeze and apply pressure on it, they are not easily compressed because they have a fixed volume and the particles are tightly packed already. So you can't really force the particle to occupy the same space at the same time. So that's why they are not easily compressed. But with liquid and gases, with a little bit of space in between and a lot of space in between the gases here, gaseous particles uh, can get closer together so they can be pressurized such as your liquefied natural gas that you use for cooking at home that is actually gases they are pressurized into the liquid state inside the uh, gas canister but of course you have a pressure regulator that can convert uh, the liquid back into gas as it flows out of the regulator and you use it for cooking Okay, liquid also are not easily compressed. As you can see, there's a bit of space, but there aren't that much space compared to gases. In terms of shape, we know that liquids take on the shape of the container. If you flow, if you pour, not flow, if you pour liquid into any kind of bottle shape, uh, the liquid water or any other liquid will just take up the shape of the container. Same thing with the gas. Solid obviously don't do that. That's why you can't put, you know, you can't solid can't occupy all the space in the container that you fit them in. Out of all of these properties, you must be able to draw them uh, according to the model based on kinetic particle theory. Explain in terms of packing, uh, separation. So packing and also separation are related. How far are they separated? How are they arranged? These are arranged in an orderly manner. These are no regular arrangement. And these are also no regular arrangement with us and space very far apart from each other. So there is no regular arrangement uh, for gases as well. And then if you look at the last bit in the syllabus, so this is what you have to do when you're revising uh, or when you want to make sure that you cover every single thing that the syllabus require. You also need to talk about motion as well, which is to do with how they're able to move and that relates to their speed and kinetic energy also. I thought it would be nice to actually go through a couple of questions uh, so that we could uh, understand the concept of what we are talking about. All right. So there's this thing of melting point and boiling point. This is related to the next bit that we'll talk about in the next uh, lecture. But I think it's important and you might have uh, covered this in your lower secondary science uh, when you have uh, been taught about melting and also uh, boiling as well. So I'll, I'll kick it off from here. If we have a melting point, so this is the temperature, the temperature uh, at which a substance, a substance goes from solid, a substance turns from solid into liquid, and you have a boiling point. So boiling point is the temperature at which a substance goes from liquid to gas. This is boiling, and this is not evaporation because evaporation can take place at any temperature. Boiling can only take place at boiling point. So here, if you are lower than melting point, if you are lower than melting point, you are still going to be a solid because haven't melted yet. You have not melted yet because you haven't even passed through the melting point. After the melting point, you're going to turn into a liquid, but you, you're still lower than your boiling point. So from, from the melting point to boiling point, you are going to be a liquid. However, when you already pass through the boiling point, then you're going to be a gas because you already boils. If you already boils, you already turn into a gas. That's why above the boiling point is already a gas. 
There is this thing called room temperature. You will get used to it. So let me just tell you, room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. This is a standard, an international standard recognized around the world. 25 degrees Celsius is room temperature. So we're looking at 25 degrees Celsius. We're looking at disorderly arrangement. Disorderly means not ordered. Not ordered means, well, it could be liquid or gases, but it is definitely not solid because solids have an ordered arrangement of particles. If we look at option A, if we have minus 114 degrees Celsius and we have minus 80 degrees Celsius, this is boiling point, this is melting point, where is our 25 degrees Celsius? Our 25 degrees Celsius is way above higher uh, then minus 80 degrees Celsius and you already passed through the boiling point. This is already a gas We already gotten our answer just by going through option a first If you go through the rest of these options, you will see that 25 degrees Celsius is lower than the melting point So if the 25 degrees Celsius, which is room temperature is lower If it is lower than room, well, sorry lower than the melting point melting point i will abbreviate i will shorten as mp so all of these are higher than melting are higher than the room temperature so at 25 degrees celsius room temperature they are still solid they are still solid uh, at 25 degrees celsius because you haven't passed through the melting point yet we'll talk more about melting and as well as melting point in the next lecture tutorial Let's go through the rest of these questions. We have this molecule, so this compound. Doesn't matter what it's called at this point, but by the end of your O-level or IGCSE chemistry, you will have learned all about uh, this particular stuff. We want the movement and we want the arrangement. And this is kinetic particle theory and they want liquid. When you are doing questions, do not hesitate to circle and underline. Do not just read, instead write, circle, underline parts of the question. By circling and underlining, we can see things better and we can do things better. All right? So we want liquid. So we know that liquid particles, so these are all kinetic particle theory. We know that liquid particles slide past each other. Okay? So in terms of arrangement, so liquid particles, liquid particles are, uh, are, are not ordered. So meaning to say you can say disordered as well. And then uh, with, and they are closely packed, sorry. They are also closely packed. They are not tightly packed. They are simply closely packed uh, with some space in between or with some separation in between or some space in between. Okay, so somewhere along that line would be okay to describe the arrangement of liquid particles. For the next question, this is just like the earlier questions. What I'll do is I'll just very quickly draw up a line diagram. This is called temperature because I'm going to put the melting point and the boiling point. And by writing down the unit, this is a stroke. Stroke degree Celsius, stroke the unit is simply how we represent label of the uh, the the heading, basically the label as well as the unit uh, in your upper secondary uh, curriculum. We have melting point, that means from solid to liquid, and that is minus 4 degrees Celsius. I already written down degrees Celsius, I don't need to repeat it there. I also have boiling point, which is liquid to gas, so I have 166 degrees Celsius there. So lower, lower the melting point, because it goes on this uh, line diagram from lowest to highest. This is a line diagram, you have known it in mathematics, and then this is higher higher than boiling point so this is boiling point this is melting point so what happened then is you know that this is going to be a solid because it hasn't melted yet and this is gas because already boils once you are at uh, once you pass through the boiling point you already melted and this one is hasn't melted yet has not melted yet because you are still lower than the melting point everything in between is going to be your liquid now this is a one mark question. You have one minute for every one mark. You have one minute for every one mark. 
I would like to emphasize that, yeah? Zero degrees Celsius, zero degree is somewhere in between. Obviously, I'm not being accurate, but it's in between. It's higher than minus four, it's lower than 166. So the physical state is going to be a liquid because in terms of the explanation, zero degrees Celsius is higher than, higher than its melting point. And then I have to specify based on the questions because you don't memorize this thing, you follow the questions, uh, but then it is lower. It is lower than its boiling point. And what is its boiling point? According to the question, the boiling point is 166 degrees Celsius. So you already melted because you passed the melting point, but you are lower than your boiling point, so you hasn't boiled, therefore it is a liquid state. All right, so I'll just leave these uh, lecture tutorials uh, here and we'll continue more on this topic in the next part of the lecture tutorial. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel and follow me at ptet.chemistry. That is at ptet.chemistry uh, across all the popular social media platforms uh, to get connected. Thank you for watching.